Welcome to Derivability. Today, here we're going to take a look at uh, the shape of a hanging cable. Okay, uh, the shape of a cable is known as a catenary. Okay, it's uh, sometimes mistaken for a parabola, but it's not. Okay, uh, let, me, let me write that word down for us here. Catenary. It actually turns out to be uh, related to a hyperbolic cosine function. Okay, we're going to prove that today uh, using some statics analysis. So this is something that is of interest to students uh, taking a course in uh, statics in mechanical engineering. Okay, just mechanical engineering in general. Okay, physics uh, is is also used here. Okay, physics students, this is something you should you should know, you should be exposed to. And it's just some good applied math. Uh, so uh, what you might notice is that I've got this, this shape drawn uh, as if it's hanging from two points, this cable hanging from two points of equal elevation. Okay, of course, you don't need to do that. That's just a convenience uh, in terms of my drawing. Okay, in fact, you know, this could be suspended between any two points, uh, same elevation or not. Uh, you, you might have that, that um, minimum point, that lowest point on the cable, um, or not. It just depends on where you are suspending the cable from. Okay, but what we're going to do is we are going to take a look at uh, an, like an infinitesimal cutout of this thing. Okay, right there, of length delta s. Okay, S like an arc length. Okay, and uh, it's going to be convenient for us to measure the arc length from that lowest point on the cable. Of course, not necessary, but you know, it's just going to be the easiest thing to do. Uh, we will, you know, be able to, to fix that at the end, but um, to, you know, to measure S from anywhere we want to. But uh, we're, we're not going to do that. We're just going to, um, like I said, kind of take the easiest version of things here. Okay, so let me kind of copy maybe a slightly less steep version of this delta S shape. And let's just do some good old uh, statics analysis here. Okay, so here's our cable. It's got just a slight little curve to it. Okay, and uh, cables contain tension forces. Okay, so free body diagram here, tension forces. Okay, now if I call tension in the lower left T, in the upper right, I'm going to call that T plus delta T. It's likely to be a little different. Okay, uh, the reason is that, uh, that we're supporting some weight here. Okay, in fact, the weight we are supporting is the weight of this uh, cable element itself. All right, now you may be familiar uh, in statics with something called an intensity loading. Or a loading intensity, okay, often denoted W of uh, as a function of a certain variable, okay, and this is the force per unit length that is loaded uh, on a beam, or in this case on a cable. Now, since the cable is the only thing there is, we want to think of this as a function of uh, the length along the cable, the position along the cable. Okay, so to get the total force, we need to multiply that uh, intensity by the length. Okay, also in free body diagrams, as you know, angles are important. So let's suppose the angles uh, are like this, relative to the horizontal direction. So uh, tension force T at an angle uh, slightly below. Um, the horizontal angle theta and then T plus delta T slightly above the horizontal by angle theta plus delta theta. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, just what we would do in a, in a very typical statics analysis first. All right, so first thing we might do is consider the X components of all the force vectors. Okay, the intensity, intensity loading doesn't have any. Uh, so we're just talking about the X components of the tensions. So we're going to take each tension force, T plus delta T, and then times the cosine of the angle at which it acts, and then likewise over here, um, T 
force acts to the left, so minus t times cosine theta. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is, is we want to uh, somehow get inside of this cosine and kind of expand this out. Okay, so what I want us to think about is uh, using kind of a Taylor approximation, and it's, it's going to look something like this. If we have some function of x plus delta x, okay, we can get a linear approximation for this by taking f of x plus f prime of x times delta x. Okay, the notation might be a little bit different, but this is just a good old uh, Taylor series sort of approximation. Okay, so um, let's uh, get that equation on the screen next that results. All right, so what I've done here is I've used this Taylor approximation for uh, the cosine of theta plus delta theta. Okay, we're going to approximate that as cosine theta. The derivative of cosine is negative sine theta, and then times delta theta. All right, so next let's distribute. We've got basically a binomial here times a binomial here, and let's uh, distribute through those parentheses. All right, so we've distributed through the parentheses now, okay, and uh, we got some good news here, and, and that is we've got some terms that, that cancel. So we have a t cosine theta, excuse me, we've got a t cosine theta right here, and another one there it cancels with, okay, and also we have a term that has two deltas in it. All right, now ordinarily that, that wouldn't go anywhere, but what we're going to do real soon is we're going to pass to an infinitesimal limit where the deltas are going to become d's, differential d's, okay? So it, it, where the differentials are essentially the smallest thing that can appear. So if you have two differentials in the same term, we're just going to say that that is negligible. Okay, that's going to approach zero. Okay, so this double delta term uh, is going to approach zero. All right, and that, so that just leaves the two terms there that uh, that you see that haven't been uh, canceled or remarked upon. All right, so I'm going to pass to an infinitesimal limit next. I'm going to turn those deltas uh, into d's. Okay, so uh, those popped up in the lower right corner there. Okay, so if we uh, just take a look at the two terms here that are left, and you turn those deltas into d's, uh, we get this first version here, negative t sine theta d theta plus dt cosine theta equals zero. Okay, you're probably recognizing this as, as a sort of product rule. Okay, so dt cosine theta, that's d applied to that, that grouping, equals zero. Okay, what that means is that this, this combination t cosine theta uh, is constant okay, if its derivative or its differential is equal to zero. Okay, now we interpret t cosine theta as the horizontal component of tension force in the cable. So what we're finding here is that the horizontal component, uh, F sub h is what I'll call it, of tension force uh, in the cable is constant. Okay, so we'll uh, uh, kind of put that in our pocket and, uh, and bring that back uh, when we need it. But next, uh, let me create a, a mostly clean screen here next, and then we'll talk about the sum of forces in the y direction. All right, so now let's consider the sum of the forces in the y direction, okay, equaling zero. All right, well, the first two terms um, in this next step resemble uh, what we had before, except my cosines are now sines. Okay, but we also have this loading. Okay, that is the, the downward force due to the weight of the cable. Okay, W of S times delta S. Okay, now going to the next line here. Okay, what we're doing is we're expanding this sine theta plus delta theta in terms of this Taylor approximation, linear Taylor approximation. Okay, uh, now what we can do is we can um, distribute um, or rather, basically, if you like, foil this uh, this first and second uh, grouping 
of parentheses. And uh, as before, we will get some things to kind of drop out and, uh, and kind of tidy uh, some things up like we did before. Okay, so inside that uh, blue lined box, you can see uh, that we get some things to, um, we get some things expanding out and we're gonna get some things to cancel here. So the T sine theta goes away. Okay, we also have a double delta term, okay, which is uh, going to approximate to zero when we go to the infinitesimal, like the delta to D limit. Okay, all right, and then what we have is our two remaining terms, okay, that are gonna kinda remind us of a product rule. And then this um, loading term, let's put on the right-hand side where it becomes positive. So that's where we get this next step. All right, okay, so here in a moment, I'll, uh, I'll come back and uh, create a clean board for us again. And uh, we'll, we'll see what uh, happens with this next. All right, so you see the two terms on the left side um, form a, a product rule, okay, a D, the differential of t sine theta uh, is equal to w of s ds. Uh, so in this case, we don't have something equaling a constant because its derivative is equal to zero like we had for t cosine theta. So what we have now is t sine theta should be the integral of w of s ds. Okay? Now, very often uh, what we have for a cable is we just have a cable that has a uniform uh, uh, intensity. Okay, so we usually call that W sub zero, W naught. Okay, and of course integrating that uh, over DS just gives us W naught times S. Okay, now in general you need a constant of integration here, but what we're doing here is, is we're going to assume that at the lowest point of the cable where theta would equal to zero for like a tangent slope, okay, that that's where we start measuring S. Okay, so S is equal to zero where theta is equal to zero. So in general, we, we would have a constant of integration here. Okay, but un, under the assumptions we are making, that constant of integration is just equal to zero. Okay, all right, so we have, uh, we've we figured out what's true in the horizontal direction for those forces, now in the vertical direction. Okay, now we have to consider uh, something about the moments. And we're gonna take a shortcut there Okay, uh, because I want to keep the length of the video uh, uh, somewhat reasonable. Okay, but then we'll take a shortcut and then we'll be ready to, to, to do the math after we do this, after we've done, uh, done with the statics analysis. Okay, well inside that blue box are the results that we got from our uh, statics analysis for the forces. Okay, now instead of going through a moments analysis, um, let me just um, remark that it results in this geometric geometric fact that we know from calculus uh, that the derivative of a curve of a function uh, is the slope of its tangent line and, and of course that the angle uh, that that makes it with respect to the horizontal is theta and, and dy divided by dx as infinitesimals would be the tangent of theta okay so, uh, so again suffice it to say that this comes from the moment equation all right, and what we can find is that if dy by dx equals tangent theta, and then using our results from um, our analysis before, we actually get this formula that dy over dx equals omega naught s over f sub h. Okay, now we can start doing some calculus on this, except there's just a little bit of a problem, and that is we have three variables, and, and we can only work with two at a time. We have y, x, and then we have s. So that what we have to do is we have to eliminate one of those variables to, to be able to work with two at a time. All right, and, and the way we normally do it is uh, we eliminate y, and we work with s and x to start with, uh, and then we can eventually, you know, again, after some, some, some work, get back to y as a function of x. Okay, so let's do that next. All right, well, we just figured out that dy by dx is equal to omega naught s over f sub h. Okay, 
Now, what's the relationship between uh, y, x, and s? Or really between their infinitesimals? Okay, well this little triangle down here tells us that. Okay, and there's a Pythagorean relationship okay, between them. And in fact, this is, this is really a lot like what you do when you, in calculus. You learn how to integrate to find arc lengths as you, as you understand the relationship between these differentials. Okay? But the important thing for us here is if we divide through by dx squared, okay, we get this relationship among the derivatives. ds by dx squared equals 1 plus dy by dx squared. Okay, but we know from over here that this derivative is equal to omega naught s over f sub h. Okay, so basically now we have a uh, little differential equation we need to solve uh, between s and x. Okay, so let's uh, let me create some clean space and then we'll begin with that here in a moment. Okay, if we, so if we separate the variables like we commonly do in a problem like this, uh, what we find here is that dx equals uh, ds divided by this square root, which, which contains uh, of, of the variable s. Okay, so you might say, well, gosh, you know, I, I should I look this up in a table of integrals? Or well, yes, you can. But if you want to do this, uh, you know, from the ground up, what we might do is choose some sort of substitution. Okay, and the substitution. Uh, we choose in this case is uh, like a hyperbolic substitution. Okay, so we're going to let this combination inside the root uh, omega naught s over f sub h. Okay, we are going to let this equal the hyperbolic sine of some variable u. Okay, now why do we choose that substitution? Okay, well uh, you you may have watched some of my hyperbolic function videos. And uh, we, the, the, one of the early ones, uh, we talked about identities, okay? And there's an identity for 1 plus cinch squared u, which is what is going to result here, okay? So if I solve this for ds, take the derivatives, I get uh, f sub h over w naught, and then my derivative of cinch is cosh, and of course I get a du variable after that. Okay, so uh, let's make this um, substitution, uh, do the integral, and see what we come up with next. Okay, well, making our substitution now, this is just exactly uh, what we needed. Okay, so the numerator, uh, the ds up top, that's what we said it was going to be. Okay, and then downstairs we have the root of 1 plus cinch squared u. Okay, but 1 plus cinch squared u is the same as cosh squared u. So when we take the square root of that, okay, we just have a cosh in the denominator. Of course, we have a cosh in the numerator that comes from our uh, taking the ds. Uh, so those dudes cancel, and we're just integrating u. So we have x equals f sub h over w naught times u. Okay. All right, now what I can do is uh, I can get u back in terms of s, all right, and uh, we, can, we can proceed otherwise. Okay, well, let's recall uh, what u um, was equal to, okay, or rather what cinch of u is equal to. So if I solve this top equation that I still have left over for u, Okay, I get u equals w naught x over f sub h. Okay, and let's suppose I take the cinch of both sides. Okay, well on one hand the cinch of u is going to equal the cinch of this expression, but the cinch of u by definition was also equal to omega naught s over f sub h. Okay, so the two things on the right hand side of the bracket themselves are equal. And now I have a relationship, I've basically integrated this relationship between ds and dx, and now I have s and x. Okay. Uh, now once again, um, maybe just a bit late, let me explain why we did not have a constant of integration up here. Okay, let's well basically, if we choose x equals 0 at our coordinate system, where s and u, turns out, would both equal zero, then that constant of integration is equal to zero. 
Okay, so it is something we have to worry about. Uh, we just had to explain it. Okay, so now let's pick up this relationship between s and x and see if we can somehow turn it into a relationship between y and x uh, after a few more steps. All right, so we have s equals uh, our constant out front times the cinch of some constant times h. Now if I take the derivative of s with respect to x, I get the cosh. The constants go away because out front uh, go away because of the chain rule. Now why in the world am I interested in that? Okay, well you may recall uh, this relationship uh, between ds, dx, and dy, dx. Okay, so what I can do next is I can um, solve for ds by dx up there. And now I have an equation just in terms of y and x. So I'm really not that far away from getting uh, the shape of the cable, that is y as a function of x. Okay, so let's set this integration up. Uh, that is the dy by dx integration, and uh, we'll be able to finish things off real soon. All right, so I've erased our free body diagram. We don't really need that anymore. Okay, so, uh, and this is pretty much the rest of our steps right here. So let's, let me go through those. Okay, so the first equation up here we had on the previous screen. Okay, now if you solve that for this derivative dy by dx, of course, you're going to have a root on the outside of cosh squared minus 1, okay, with the appropriate constants in here. Okay, well, once again, uh, we're, we're relying on this uh, hyperbolic cosine and sine uh, Pythagorean identity for this, I think, the second time here uh, in this video. Okay, so what we're finding out is dy by dx equals this hyperbolic cinch function. Okay, and all we have to do now is integrate that. Okay, and, and we know that the cosh and the cinch are uh, each other's derivatives and antiderivatives. Okay, so when we take the antiderivative here, okay, we get this constant f sub h over uh, w naught coming out. Now, generally, we would get a cosh plus some arbitrary constant. Okay, now um, I, what I'm doing is, is the constant is not arbitrary here. Um, the constant is, ba when you distribute, is basically uh, f sub h over omega naught, okay, uh, that is times the negative one, okay, and the reason is that we are, or I am, supposing that my origin of coordinates corresponds to the lowest point on the cable, which also corresponds to where we start measuring the arc length, okay, which is a very common way of doing things. All right, so when you do that, then what you finally, and just packaging things up now, what you finally get is this equation for the shape of the cable. Y equals uh, F sub H over omega naught, and then times parentheses cosh omega naught X over F sub H minus one. Okay, and again, this is at the lowest point of the cable uh, is at the origin of coordinates. Okay, so this video has been just maybe slightly longer than usual. I hope it was worth it for you to stick around the whole way here. Uh, it's just a lot of steps um, and other, other things that, that uh, we had to do. Hope you enjoyed the um, um, printed uh, equations uh, more so than my handwriting. Okay, uh, hope that you can't make some comments if, if that's a helpful thing. You want me to keep doing that more in the future. All right, um, but anyway, um, Thanks for hanging around. Uh, give me a, a subscription to the channel uh, so, if you, so you can see more new videos right when they come out. Okay, and uh, I'd love to afford you to keep coming back. Thanks again for joining us, and uh, have a good week.